Hello and welcome. My name is Kevin. This is Do It For Bruce. Today we're showing you how to reform the Asa True Faith in Crusader Kings 3. The two main hurdles you need to overcome are controlling at least three of the five holy sites and accumulating enough piety to reform your faith. There are many ways to gain piety in CK3. Some are more long-term month over month and others come from events, decisions, and other piety producers. First and foremost, let's discuss month over month piety. Before I'm pausing the game, you should switch your character to the learning lifestyle. I would suggest the theology focus because it was going to give you one piety a month. You can also do the other two focuses. They're just not as efficient at producing piety. You'll be putting your points in the theologian skill tree, making your way down to the prophet skill, which gives you 1% piety per night, which is nice, but you're really after the faith creation and reform costs minus 50%. You can still reform your faith without this skill, but it requires you to farm more piety. Next, switch your spouse to patronage. This will add half of their skill to your skill. If your spouse isn't very learned, you might want to consider dropping them for a smarter person. Every point of learning is 0.1 piety, so if you have 7 learning, it's 0.7 monthly piety. If you have 15 piety, it's 1.5 piety a month. You get it. More learning equals more piety. Next, it's your Hofgodi. Thankfully, you can switch them out for a person with the highest learning in your court. The more learning they have, the more efficient their religious relation tasks will be. However, once you make the switch, they can only change every 10 years or until they die. Lastly, you should start grooming your heir to be the most learned child in all the land, just in case you aren't able to reform your religion with this first character. Next, let's talk about decisions, events, and other piety producers. You can determine a personal deity as Norse. If you choose Odin, he will give you 0 0.03 piety a month. Personally, I don't think it's worthwhile as some of the other deities, but this is your playthrough. Next, there are three decisions that can be taken that increase piety. They are raise runestone, go on a pilgrimage, and hold a grand blot. They should be done in that order because you actually need 50 gold in hand to raise a runestone, whereas the other two can incur debt. Raise the runestone decision can only be taken if you have 50 gold and you've met one of the following prerequisites. Had a recent dead ancestor, conquered a county, or gained a rank promotion, i.e. move from count to duke to duke to king. The easiest one of three is to conquer a weak neighbor and then take the decision. I would suggest going after the holy site in Ranaheim because you need at least three holy sites and they're usually very easy to take on. Once you have met the prerequisites, you'll be able to raise the runestone and collect your 250 piety. This decision can only be done every 10 years. Now for the pilgrimage. It can range from 50 to 150 gold to go on a pilgrimage. It all depends on where you are located and how far you are from the different holy sites. Either way, find the option that says very long because the longer the pilgrimage, the more piety you get. Usually Kunigrud is the longest and will give you 625 piety. If very long isn't available, try for the long or medium, which will still yield about 375 or 250 piety. There are a number of events that occur during the pilgrimage. Whichever of the five events you get, obviously select the ones that boost piety. From my research, only three out of the five events give you piety boosting options. Once you've returned from pilgrimage, you will receive pilgrim freight, which will help you with your month-to-month -month piety game. You will not be able to take this decision for another 15 years. As for the grand blot, you should take the cheapest option, which is the first one, unless it throws you over the stress ledge. Next, you take the last option, which costs 75 gold, but gives you 250 piety. If you have people to sacrifice in your prison, you can designate them for sacrifice before the event is over. From what I've seen, it would be better to just execute them yourself because then you'll get more piety from their death. There are several pulse events that occur during the normal course of the game. Some will offer more piety or learning experience or a mixture of both. For these events, it's difficult to say which are the correct ones to take because it all depends on where you're at in your playthrough. If you need more piety, then take the piety. If you need more learning experience, take the learning experience. These pulse events can be used to, as a nice supplement for where you need to advance in these categories. Another helpful way to get piety is to fight other people of different faiths. 
So the best way to do that is to raid a realm of a different faith and wait until their army shows up. This is a nice way to pick up some easy piety and prisoners. While you are raiding and fighting other realms, this will be another opportunity to boost your piety. When you capture anyone, you can execute them and gain piety for it. The amount of piety gain is as follows. 25 for commoners, 50 for county lords, 100 for dukes, 250 for kings, and 500 for emperors. If you can pull that one off, I'd love to see it happen. This is by far the best method to farm piety when you've exhausted all your other options. Holy sites. Each faith has five holy sites. You only need three to reform your religion. For Asa True, the counties that have them are Uppsala, Jorvikain, Paderborn, Kundergard, and Ranheim. This will be another hurdle for you to overcome because only one out of the five is simple to acquire. In 867, Ranaheim is a one county realm, so you should be able to grab that pretty easily. Of the four that are left, I think the next best one is Uppsala and Upland. They start off at war, so they don't have time to pick up allies, so you should grab some of your own and take the holy site before they are able to end the war and form Sweden. After that, it really depends on what occurs in your playthrough. Your Overkind will probably be the next best option, but only after Halfdan White Shirt has died and used most of his event troops. The holy site in Paderborn is close by, but you probably take multiple wars with East Franca to get control of it. You also might luck out and have Hasting take over East Rankia, which would make it easy pickings once he begins to splinter, as is his fate. Finally, the last holy site, which is usually outside of your diplomatic range and deep in Eastern Europe, which would make it a huge headache to try for. You should look at reforming your faith so that you can have an idea of how much piety you'll need. Depending on what you choose for tenets and doctrines, the piety cost can vary wildly. Once you have the three holy sites and a pile of piety, it's time to click that reform faith button. From there, it's just up to you to spread it far and wide. In conclusion, some of the best ways to gain piety are through events such as raising a rune zone, pilgrimage, or grand blot. Other methods are executing prisoners and fighting heathens. Of the five holy sites, Uppsala, Ranaheim, Jorvik are some of the easier ones to get. That's a wrap for today. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Let me know what other faiths I should cover. Have a good rest of your day.